before they do that again. Yeah, Wild Turtle died so early. Oh no, they have Sin, Evelyn. Corky will be annoying later. But TF and Gragas. dangerous. It is, however, a lot of curse. Four members with no smite and just. X Special and Reginald <laughs> trying to stop this one. That bear's going down fast. Ward after ward. X Special keeping him safe. Save Reg is going break. in. They go. No, it goes to Boy Boy. He gets the execute down on the bear. Nasher. The kill coming in under Reginald. Curse is going to play this one slow. They know they have the upper hand. There was no risk of St. Peter's getting smite stolen there because he wasn't even at Baron. Nope. So that's what the Curse got it. No problem. That's the Best second solution. bear in the game that Curse has been able to pick up here. And it just keeps them in it barely. They've been getting crushed so much, but because They've snuck the Barons. They've got. They've had very good pushback team fights when TSM's really pushing hard. That they've just scraped their way to survival here and almost even the game if you look at the scoreboard. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm. Yeah, just that. It's eight to two in turrets. How is there not more map pressure coming in from Team Solo mid? They're losing Barons. They've got every dragon. I, it's. It's a little backwards. Yeah, one of the craziest games of the season was last week's game between Cloud9 and COG, where COG had lost everything, but they kept getting dragons. <laughs> this game is Curse losing everything, and then somehow they get Baron twice in 33 minutes. And now they, they kind of have to do this right now, since if Curse fights in their base, as soon as they lose a fight, the game is over. They have to turn something around. I don't think Curse can bank on getting a third Baron. And if this fight went bad, it probably would be the end of the game, probably. but it'd be a tough yeah, push. There aren't many minions for TSM, but they do have that tank. If Curse goes down, they gotta take down as many members as possible. That's obligatory to happen, but it's crucial in this point, because it could be the last fight, like you said. And Curse is really gonna be focusing hard on Wild Turtle. He's building the full offense, Caitlyn, as he usually does, and those shock blasts are hitting for full damage. He did get his last whisper in. Like we said, it was a little lackluster before, but everybody's ramped up on Curse. Only a few level 17s left on this one. Saints 16 now, actually over the odd one after these fights. Remember, odd one has always been up in CS, but Saints participation in the lanes, the experience he has grabbed throughout the taxing that he loves to do, is really putting this team on top. And the level comparison, he's almost losing these fights with us. And we know how hard that Curse wants to dive through TSM. So the odd one's gonna Today. be as big a wall as he can possibly be. But with these Baron buffs, Curse has gotta get rid of some of these traps before they decide to go in. They really wanna take down this turret, and they could fight whenever. Saint gets pulled. This gonna start it. Eyes on Wild Turtle. He gets shots on the Saint. Saint goes out, dies to the Equalizer. Wild trying to get himself in a good spot here. Shots over the wall. It's gonna be Odd One trying to throw on the Ulti and get the AoE damage in his area. Cop. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, Very nice shot there. Man. And they are able to get out. Still just a one for one and the Baron is still regenerating Curse. Edward is low on mana though, you so he can't spam him. heal up with Sona. Everyone on TSM is getting some heals on the base and they might look to repel this, but Curse really wants this turret. It's, there's so much to lose, but with Reginald down, it's such a me. chance that they have to take. Looks and like they're gonna have to back away though, know. just because of how healed TSM was and how low on <laughs> mana specifically Sona was. But that Minions was a good sign for Curse, a strong push for them. They still have a minute left on their turn, and they're gonna try to pick up a few of TSM's buffs along the way. Are they gonna get dragged? The Curse first gets dragon? the first oh, dragon of the game. 35 minutes in, Team Solo Mid not able to answer. Well, this game just got real interesting. Grim. Just a tad. Just a little. We get the best games this weekend. Eight turrets to four. That turret just now makes the gold 500 gold difference. And considering how one-sided this seemed to be for Ever TSM vigilant. early, Curse has come strong back. There was the game yesterday, Rim, with Curse and Velocity, where Curse seemed to have him in the bag. They lost a few fights near Velocity inhibitors, and then slowly but surely Velocity came and rolled it back. Curse is trying to do the same to TSM right now. This is one of the most dangerous points in the game. That last fight is a rush down middle. It doesn't matter that there's four turrets that Curse is trapped. It matters how they're trying but they're about to run down to get home to TSM's Nexus. So these fights absolutely going to tell the story of the game once it happens. And there's a double Guardian Angel on Curse right now. It's very debatable whether that item is still usable sometimes, because it used to be the best item for late game. It was substantial during the season three, and it will give them the revives, but they don't have the damage up with the TSM's gonna have. So if we compare a Cobb to a Wild Turtle right now, Turtle's gonna be doing more damage, but Cobb may come back at the end of the fight. The question is, will it matter when we see the big clash, which I feel like in 36 minutes, we're about to. That 36-minute clash has the 80 carries just time. about equaling gold. They are going to be spitting out so much damage. Like I said, kind of focused on that in the last fight. We may do it again depending on how the situation really goes. 
but it is going to be a hard fight to focus on. There's going to be a lot of jumping around. The repelling, the gap closing, and it's going to be big. Nijeki, like you said, that Guardians and Cop. So the positioning of the team can be a little bit more chaotic for Curse now. Yeah, they can try to do whatever they want, but in that last push, they never got the inhibitor turret down. So diving through is incredibly dangerous for them, specifically because they want Saint to do it, and Saint is getting blown up in some of these fights. Looking to make a move. They wanted to start that fight, but walk right over that ward and have him just on the outside. Looks like he kind of wants to squeak his way in and get another one down, but they are just blocking that back end. It's just turret this down behind you. You can almost get flanked. And Turtle is getting crushed down by Nijaki's shot glass. It's continually making him having to go back to base, and Curse is chipping back at TSM oh, just man. with the long range poke from Nijaki. First, the line approaches. Consistent aggressive now coming from Curse. They found a way around Team Solo Mid. And really, Team Solo Mid was going like Cloud 9S in the beginning. Just in your face, fighting all the time. That's what they love to do. And it seems like once Curse won that fight right from the base, they took out a few. And then Warboy took them in the bottom lane. They said, yeah, we should be going to off lane. And what happens when you slow that strategy down? Because what TSM was able to accomplish was very strong early game team fighting with Reginald and Dyrus and the odd one just kind of keeping pressure up to create that. But that team toughness that TSM has right now doesn't have very like the strongest of initiation to tower that. So for them to actually try and end the game, now it's <laughs> you get touched by one thing, it's over. Catch back up on gold, thanks to the small part of the two barons they were able to sneak on. Makes it very difficult for TSM to end the game now since their initiation is not reliable. Equalizer is pretty much an open for the initiation. You just walk out of it if you want. Break their Everything, it, it comes down to that having to be perfect for the, for the team solo mid initiation. And that's really a niche you don't want to be in. 40 minutes into the game, they are trying Saint to act. Really on this go. One. The net goes the down, he gets prisoned up. They may just Whoa. Whoa. Why did they stay? It's special going down after Retro gets hit up to the skies and welcome to the slam and jam. It's going to be Boy Boy and his team trying to pick up more kills. Oh, it's a double kill for Cops and the run for the base. And these are really long death happens right now, Rip. Curse has everybody alive right now and the minion wave coming up. They might look to try to end this game against only Dyrus and Wild Turtle. And have great damage for taking down Turrets the squad to have up two or down 31 seconds on the shortest timer and that's special not exactly the best siege stopper looks like they're going to be going for this turret the first nexus to go down and the second one goes down. Ball. Turtle goes down oh my god turtle didn't even last two abilities they continue on to the next turret turret is definitely turning around their momentum this season not only did they turn around this game but that comeback could turn around their entire season an absolutely amazing showing by Curse. Knocked down multiple times, thrown around, and put to the side, and they came right back to the front door. When it was open, they didn't let their foot get kicked out of them. Fans started standing up after that game, and it's so perfect for Curse, because Velocity did the same thing to them yesterday that Curse just did to TSM. The from their deathbed comeback, Rushing through, getting the clutch team fight at the end, and then just pile driving down that nexus. I cannot believe how amazing these games are at MLG. The crowd is fueling so much of this energy, yeah. so much of the fact that yes, this can still happen in these players. You can see it on the face of Saint. Look at Liquid in there, and a super happy Stay team manager down. right now. These guys, you could say they're on cloud nine. <laughs> they could be. You need a new name somehow. Look at the scoreline right here. So Cop, 11, 1, and 5 on Draven. We're saying Cop may need to go back to other eight carries, but he had a Draven game to prove that he should be playing Draven this time. Oh, Quadra kill when they were trying to repel this from the base. Yeah. And then just continue to pressure down with the rest of the team. Running with Curse, not worried about getting dope, building that Guardian Angel, and just mowing down the TSM line. Huh? Five dragons, pretty much, all to yourself. Yeah. Eight turrets to two. Eight turrets to two, and that's what they have. 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 That's what and then they just kept on doing it. It was a great comeback there by Curse. They were the comeback kids in the spring show. Oh, oh, not believe these matches are happening. We still have one more match to go here before MLG Sunday kicks off tomorrow. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have Colts vs. Watts coming up next. Some amazing matches. I believe we'll have an interview as well. Oh, yeah. If we don't, because the night is so short, we're sorry. But 
The VODs will be up at MLG.TV 30 minutes after, so please They'll have to get through me. Dominating. Ooh, yes. The sun that always one. rises. Because it won't be dead. Shine and go. <laughs> the sun. I'm a knock box. You have been slain. An enemy has been slain. Welcome back everyone, MLG Anaheim still crowded with fans, ready for some NALCS action. Like I said, all the esports stages are going right now. The intensity, the emotion, everything happening in this room right now is so oh, fun. We have Coast versus Velocity coming up. Coast has been having that kind of season. They're coasting a little bit, they've had some ups and downs, yeah. but they've been one of the First more interesting teams to watch with their picks, what they bring out, like what, what they try to do. Exactly, and coming into the season, everyone was thinking, I wonder how Coast is going to do after finishing last week in second place. And they started off really strong. But they still show a lot of consistency that they have played in the spring split this season. Especially, even their game yesterday against Cloud9. They got pretty much decimated by that team. And they need to be able to bounce back today against the Blossom. You know, finally, when they saw that kind of worked out for them, it didn't work. Themselves out of their own comfort zone to really find what they need. Coach definitely is one of the teams that's better at that. I kind of makes you wonder how much can this team really prepare for things because they've essentially only prepared about kind of learning to play with each other. Once they've meshed as a team, what's next? They've never actually had to think about this because they're all the ones who just surrounded So now is the time for them, since they've been a team for a while. 
can they really come together and become a top team for real? We have to remember, they're one of the ones that were considered the bottom, were able to get Rally themselves to back to the top, which is a scary thing for these teams. Uh, somebody said, you know, you got to worry about the people under you, not the people above you. Yeah, and I don't think, I don't even know if that's what Coach has been thinking about. They've just been thinking about, man, how do we get in game? Elements is also yep. their coach now. Yes, yeah, the team is all about him. People give me crap for this, but Elements has always been on winning teams. He knows something about League of Legends, or at least teamwork that works. He was on COG when they were the top team. He was on Curse when they started the last play for the season. Coach adding him to the lineup, if he's involved with their day-to-day, -day, could be a very good thing, even though he's not playing. Have the, the role to kind of watch the entire map all the time. They do that consistently day in, day out. Yeah, I know personally that Elements played a lot of lacrosse in college, so just he's had team play experience. He knows what it's like Ever to be on sports teams, he knows what it's like to communicate, and he can potentially be helping coach with all these things. Right, and on the other side, the lot who referred to their trial regulations, finding a house in the beginning. They've rooted a few wins for themselves. Shit is retarded. Oh my god. Yeah, and yesterday was potentially a turning point for the lot. <laughs> Velocity came back on Curse yesterday. Get CC the fuck up, son. Ridiculous. Maple Street also hit sort of the divine switch, was just flushing and instantly killing Nijak in a lot of those team fights. So. They're definitely a team to try unconventional things because they're not necessarily at a point where they can beat teams straight up yet. So they're always a wild card coming in these matches. That's why you can say that it's not fan something against Val Rose and stop yeah. him from always being able to put out some damage or help the team change. And that's not a problem. Although, I do like watching them play Kale, because as you said yesterday, if they're playing Kale, they don't need to run tanks. Right. And it's really fun to watch five squishy champions flying around the battlefield and having no real tank line. Which is the type of chaos that you want to see for They absolutely love to see that chaos. Vile Rose in the background, being the voice of the team, really helping the team team. Just mobilizing any direction to see anything else in that picking up through the microphones because they're so loud like many feet away they're just like did someone just say something it's like yeah i think that's i think Byros is shouting just random things are going well this team rocking it up they're getting ready coast doing the coast chant you can see velocity was just in their box as well they're gonna head in the soundproof boots the headphones the white noise being pumped in but the crowd still as we said before drives these players you know talking about velocity a little bit Chris, one of the players that is a very mentally driven player, loses lane, but still has come up to the interview desk after a win in losing that lane terribly to say, yeah. you just have to keep your head in the game. It's one of the things that's going to happen, and you just have to deal with it. And both of these teams have a very high the way they approach the game. Valros being the new player, always calling the shots with Chris on his team. They keep it positive, and they kind of have to, specifically teams that are consistently underdogs in these matches, in order for them to improve, in order for them to keep communication between themselves, you have to know how to take a loss, and that comes with having to know how to get loose in the game and come back and can't just fall apart. And that's what the teams have actually been pretty good at, is the comeback this season when they play. I'm not so far. I'm not so far. It's like the game we just seen. The player's almost ready to get into this matchup. We are in the mix and bands, ladies and gentlemen. The last NALCS matchup the night before MLC Sunday. Thanks for sticking with us. Stay in tune. We sure enjoy the crap out of this map. We're going to the chat. We're going to bring you the last one. And then we got more matches tomorrow. So many. This is League of Legends. Competitive action. Noon has been banned every game. This split. I mean, this, this, uh, you, see, uh, you think we'll see Nunu on the infographic after this weekend? 100%. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's Nunu at the Rally top. To me. Jana going out on this one. We're going to see that going towards us. Mm -mm. Or even like Bio Rose. They, um, we did do that. something. Uh, just, it's actually better if you do like all tanks, so all AoE. Like Sejuani, Malphite, all of them. Oh my god. It's ridiculous. One of those things completely blocks the strategy. So what Coach is doing now is trying to ward against the lot of strategies. The E man is what they used yesterday. Even though it's not a wacky strategy, it shuts down. It kind of shuts down the fast kill game. And then Janna shuts down the kill strategy. And Vile Rose on your screen there. Man of the velocity team, as you said, making the calls. You can see, you can kind of hear the discussion go, or see the discussion. You can't hear it. No, we have, uh... So, with that out of the way, 
These guys always, it has to be pure communication. You see GSM switching around because there wasn't communication in the next So, yeah, I still think that's weird. Yeah. But these guys, people think they can be one out of this. And GSM is doing it towards the later part of the season. There have been points in history where someone hasn't picked a champion. It was actually Adam MLG. Plums didn't lock in something and they random feigned for Dig and Toss. Yeah. Then they won with it, but I can kind of see it, I guess. Even though it's still confusing. They've taken out the song and they decided to shift them and playing a whole bunch of. Yep. And Jace is Zion Spartan's best champion. Zion Spartan did have a lot of success on Rhythm earlier on, but you don't really want to pick that in first because it's very lane specific and you don't want to pick that against a really tanky team. You're going to subscribe. I just don't know. Threshing uh, Blitz or AD. Disengage to you because Rhythm kind of bounces their way into the fight. So. That was really dumb by you. And I think they're going to pick something real in the second. There we go. And they're gonna get Daydreaming, Blitz Crank locked in. We may see this coming into the mid lane here. They may try to give a little bit of harassment to NK's jungle on that. Rally and when we say mid lane Blitz, it's the duo lane mid, because ah. that's what Daydreaming loves doing. We've gotta clarify, just in case, like, mid lane Blitz, what are you talking about, Riv? That never happens. But that'll be Daydreaming, and picking it over Thresh is very bold. Specifically, picking Raven into Blitz Crank is bolderer. Because Maple Street mains it, but giving Blitzcrank a target for where to hook it in a few seconds is always dangerous. Oh, Nintendo Dex, you're actually not going for one of his out of the box jugglers. He's gonna be throwing down Jarvin this game. I'm really liking this team for Coast. He's trying to just put his foot down the door to go with Richard Ward. He's a champion, so he's gonna let him pick up the I love to see uh, we're not tricking ourselves right now because we're saying Blitz and Caleb do you go mid. Because I would love to see a mid Jarvin. It's something that has a lot of impact. It fits in very well with the mid lane style of the old Kha'Zix, the Zed, and also what Diana can do, which is do quick shoving and tons of kill potential early. It seems like a big shifter would play because he's very versatile, but this is a guess, and if I'm wrong, then I wasn't talking about anything. Just pretend I didn't say that. Absolutely. So we look at the other side, and I lo always loved this happened last time. They blocked in Zyra in the first. Fourth K carry. The last pick for the team, and it's it's beautiful for Maple for, yeah Maple Street for Vile Rose to get that last pick. You get the counter up, but it's what Vile Rose likes to do, and I think he's going to use it with the cannon. Stay at the vanguard. Would be my two good guesses. Even though he'll know safe to pick into, it's gonna be a pretty cool choice. I wanna see what Coast finishes this team comp with because what we're probably knowing is probably a double time of not so have a mid-jar and TF makes the most sense for them because that's actually something shift is very good. We feel the nail here for the file rows. I have to dive for dice in these things like it'll work out. Oh, he's very possibly coming in. They may leave the Britain dead. Almost be hovered on here. That is a assassination. Got him. That is just coming around. If they go with him, it's a huge amount of physical damage. That's a dangerous game he's playing. Oh, my God. That goes to Ari. All right, man. Risky. That clock runs out of time. Ever uh, a few seconds after that you have, it's like, it says one second, but it's like having zero life and still being here. Alright, so the Kale did come in for Valo. We know we're gonna have a block. That's a really comfort champion for them. Coast Line them up. them and Shifter on disaster. Shifter is also a story for you guys that we didn't talk about too much. We'll have to get into that. Because Matt plays the judge for a quick commercial break, and then we have Coast versus Velocity coming up. We'll be right back. Go 
<laughs> Murder! Live in under the rip here, the last matchup of MLG Saturday here at MLG Anaheim Street Championship. We have Coast versus Velocity underway. The Coast has littered the bottom half of the jungle with things here. First, the They're really coaches. looking to get some early positioning here. Level one's gotten a lot more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Next 15 seconds to kind of pull some the stuff off. Plus, you're not yeah. really baited to get Shut people down. set up in race to take them a 140 and give yourself lane advantages. And so it's all about invading and big buff control because and those things are so much more valuable slain. now. And Coach is actually rushing that spot because they thought Velocity was going to come into their buffs. All right, guys, on that Twitter, make sure you get your votes in as they update frequently on the screen. Actually, in real time, I should say, we have hashtag CST, hashtag VES. Make sure you get your votes in. There they are on the screen. The one vote coming in right now for CST as they start to build. Uh, we'll have to see one person putting in the back. Uh, it depends on what people consider dunks. Because then you have, like, <laughs> Kazakh and... The, most of the people think dunk is, like, someone, anyone that does, like, some random damage. Even, like, Vygar sometimes is considered, like, a dunker. And it looks like they're going quite aggressive and it looks like they're here to stay. Yeah, LeBlanc, like, like, or you can go, like, here, people so that have, like, just finishing ult. Some trouble for if he gets fun. a little antsy and tries to check in his blue buff, but he's completely content going for red. This is probably the lowest ward start I've seen from any of these teams, or any of the teams this week, as yeah. far as trying to get to position. He, yeah, they thought there was... They thought the Washi was going to start that blue. And I think the Washi was predicting the Blitzcrank coast, which is why NKA was saying, yeah, you're not going to do it. He's 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 not going to do it. Oh, that's why. Bottom lane, that's why they're coming from mid. It just happened. And I'm looking at this bottom lane here. It's not about whether or not they just plan to focus on the list. I've got to say, Ken is one of the best 1v2 laners in the game. And surprisingly, both of these guys have accurately predicted where each other's jugglers were starting. When JD Rim pulled out blue and didn't get any counterattack, he was like, oh, that's because NK probably started an R blue. They were able to trade double cuts for each other. They're walking it around, reading each other's minds. Chris in his lane. Nashley getting some push up here, and you can see that Blitz was out of lane for that. Oh my gosh! Picture perfect. This could happen here. Coast is gonna just shit in the turret. They're gonna say, hey, Chris, wanna party? Stay at the van. I don't think Chris wants to party. I think he wants to run away. He's not at the risk of getting in here, but he knows he has back. Well, they actually put a lot of damage on the Jager, who's still level one. He's all of his roaming friends. He was completely invited there. Yeah, didn't want to go. The invitation was not RSVP'd, but it was NK Inc. that said, I will take. That, yeah, I see Kha'Zix. Starts to match the lane and backing off. Double goals are now going to be all up from the center deck. Yeah, I wonder how the stack is going to affect Zion's target at the top lane because he's had no jump support. The knowledge of that jungle bottom is totally 2v1 and he's actually still level 1 because he's at such risk of getting hit by Maple Street and this is Even just a little bit of smoke getting taken before he gets to that turret. He's going to miss potentially a lot of minions if Maple Street gets very aggressive here. I wonder if Velocity is going to try to push him off this turret. He's even still trying to use his stun damage just to farm on a few of those. He's 12 to 0 in CS right now. Has only grabbed one, and those First minions are just going to get purchase. soaked up by the turret. There has to be something done by Nintendo Dax, and he is mobilizing top. That's the risk they ran when they went for Kennen, and it was well played by NK. I have to say, a 3 for 2 due to the turret is probably better at repelling the 2 for 1. It's an advantage here for Velocity for having that early game mind game going down. That's actually what Velocity sells at. Oh, Zion going a little hard. Nintendo Dex was there, but it really wasn't the end game. And I absolutely love what's been happening in the bottom lane. NK Inc. stayed. Knowing the pressure top would then draw Nintendo Dex, but he's been having a field day soaking up experience without any worry. And this is a turret race. We're seeing more and more. It started at the 
start of the season three, then it went away. It's back again, it seems, with these yep. guys. Junglers are really babysitting, and it's important, too, the junglers they're picking have to have threat in a 2v2 situation. Oh, they go hard. That's the first blood coming out. Eveniscus, ooh, not able to get too much damage off that. And that's the reason you bring the jungle Jarvis sometimes. It's just him and Riven combined. If they get the jump on you, can burst so much damage when they both hit level four. There was overconfidence there with Maple Street and Eveniscus because they had played that early trade so well, but they didn't gain wow, the he got cocky. potential from intended X properly and they got punished for it. And that is going to hurt Meveniscus and Maple Street even more because that was the flash and the ignite burned Not on the engagement. Me. On the other side, nothing was even burned to get that kill. Except, no, I, I, look, all the way, I look at the bottom of the top, it yeah. was the flash that I converted. I think it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. After getting to see that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He really needed that to get back in. Unfortunately, though, Zalzar didn't pick up that kill. Since he's been denied so heavily in mini kills, he's only able to pick up that going point, even though he's five and a half minutes in the game. So still not the best situation, but definitely good for him. Chosen okay, and finally pulling off the bottom half of that. We still have to remember, Zion gets that kill. It's good. He kills about, you know, towards 20 CS, right? But that's about what he's down right now in that CS. And it's only going to grow. So, Chris, having three lanes at the bottom, he's going up experience right now. Chris not getting too much black for him. And Zion Spartan has to come back and save this turret with his hopeful oh. threat against Eveniscus and Maple Street. But they are... Not scared, mm. even though they've already died, and they will continually keep pressure on the turret. It looks like Gloss is going to be the turret to turret. With that one ward out, the whole ward game still since the beginning. The map is pretty scarce. There's only two in each spot for uh, both teams that need to be there. We're going to be going down his top lane. That siege wave will make this doable, and we see that going down. Six and a half minutes in, Zion Spartan. It's a little bit more farm out of this now, but that means the roam of Maple Street and Aveniscus begin to happen. Yeah, it's all about where Velocity goes from here because Coast has definitely decided to go up mid lane from the and back. There's no way they're getting enough out of this turret, though, to make that one worth it. What Coast has to do is actually get the bottom lane.